What is going on, YouTube? Wade with Wade's Ventures here, and I am super, super excited about this um, cool live show. We've got Glenn on the line here, and uh, Glenn, we don't um, have any viewers yet because it just loaded, but <laughs> give me one second. Let's see. Yeah. Let's uh, let's wait for a couple people to come in. But those of you who are watching on, um, you know, here in a few hours, this is a live show, so. Uh, it's um, if you have any questions, please put in the comments. But Glenn, we're live now, buddy. So go ahead and introduce yourself. All right, my name is Glenn. Instagram handle Glenn Burn One. I'm a reseller, and uh, I really appreciate the you having me on your channel. Absolutely, Glenn. So I, I, so those of you who are just joining, um, Glenn has always been like super amazing to me. Um, you've you've been part of like my journey since like I had a few hundred followers, right, Glenn? Yeah. yeah. Um, I think I saw you from Chris's channel and loved the content and could definitely relate to, to your family and lifestyle and, um, just loved everything. About yeah. It's so it's, um, those of you who don't and real quick, Glenn, didn't you, uh, did you have a chance to meet, um, who didn't you meet live recently? It was, it's, um, uh, endless entrepreneurs by chance yeah it was luke um <clears throat> i've been chatting with him for a while um he's local to charlotte as well same with me um so i've been chatting privately with him for a while now and we've been trying to meet up for a for a long time but you know things are always you know traveling work and whatnot uh but we finally were able to meet up and we went to a couple thrift stores together and we say we thrift kind of similar stuff and there was more than enough to go around which was just awesome and we even ran into another reseller there huh yeah it uh, he is amazing like and he is he's got a lot going on too he's got like rentals and yeah. job I, I love following that journey of his i'm looking forward to all those new uh, uh real estate content shows yeah he's a really great guy mm -hmm. so i wanted to uh so those of you who don't know Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays, I invite people on the show who have not really been live, who are not Instagram famous, not YouTube famous yet. And uh, I really want to uncover amazing resellers, guys. And that's the goal of this show. So for the next two days and today, I want to invite people that you know have not really been known or not really been shown and um and then kind of uncover them so you guys can invite them to both instagram and youtube and glenn is amazing and uh, so glenn let's go ahead and get started buddy so i want to ask you the first question i have to you is full-time or part-time and, and if you're not full-time do you have any aspirations to be i am part-time i work full-time in the corporate it field um so i work nine to five pretty much every day and then I have two little kids at home so my home time is uh, very busy as well um, so fitting in the reselling stuff is a challenge but uh, I try to make it work and uh, I like my job a lot so currently I have no plans on you know taking it full time at the moment uh, I really enjoy it I love working with the people that I do in the industry that I'm in and so Kind of just doing this part time right now. I can relate to you more than a lot of people in regards to like home life, right? Like having a full time job, doing reselling. Yep. You've got two kids. I one of them. How old is he? Right. I got a two and a five year old, both boys. Oh jeez. Did you want two boys? By the way, I'm curious. I, I love I love boys. Uh, in my opinion, they're just a little bit easier. I got a friend that has two girls, and uh, yeah. I, I like the two boys. My wife's over here. I uh, say, oh boy, you know, the breeder in, breeder in. No, um, I, I'm super excited too. I've got, uh, as you guys know, I have one, one amazing boy named Cade, and then one on the way. So I, yeah, I yeah and I, I think it's really cool to have two boys too. Like I, yeah. I saw one of your Instagram posts. You had him, I think, in the in the park or something. Yeah, we went to the park, and my older son had a little play date, and, and so I had the little one with me, and. Uh, it's monkey see, monkey do. Really, the little one always wants to do what the big one's doing. And did, did the little one learn a lot faster because they had the absolutely the ten times faster? Hmm. Yep. Well, I um, so 
sounds like full-time job you love, which is fantastic. You're right in the realm of a lot of people. And um, so that's really cool. So let's go on to the next question because I think this is really, really a uh, good one. And uh, I, the reason I asked this question is what state you're in, because I kind of want to know what's around you to thrift at. So if you can tell me kind of what state you're in and, and where you thrift and how you thrift, that'd be awesome. So I'm originally from upstate New York, uh, which is kind of funny because that's where Luke's from as well. So we had a lot in common. And uh, so now we are in Charlotte, North Carolina on the East Coast. Uh, we're real fortunate to have some fairly priced thrift stores here and garage sale seasons coming up soon. Um, so I do a lot of thrifting at thrift stores, Goodwill, Salvation Armies, um, Value Village. Uh, those are the three core ones. Um, we have the bins, which I started at. That's how I pretty much started. And I don't really go there anymore. Um, our retail price uh, stores are are very fair. We pay like $4 a shirt, $5 jeans. Um, so yeah. And then once it starts getting warmer, all the garage sales are, they're everywhere. Um, Did you use the yard or was it the garage sale treasure map or yard sale yeah, treasure, the treasure map? map? Yep. I got it on my phone. Uh, it's real helpful showing the estate sales and regular sales and all what, stuff. what hours do you work for your full-time job? Like where are you fitting in thrifting between full-time job kids it's a big challenge <laughs> and that's what probably was reluctant to start with in the beginning uh, i do 8 30 to 5 30 so by the time i actually get home though it's not till 6 30 because i i drive into the city every day um so i do all my ebay work at night when the kids are in bed um i just don't have time at the moment when the kids are awake all my attention goes to them and things that we're doing as a family so just at night, um, on weekends, um, sometimes I'll go early, you know, when stores open and whatnot and go thrifting there. Sometimes after work, um, on a lunch break here or there, uh, not too much. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Just whenever I a little time in when we're driving with the family, going to the park, uh, you know, on the way home, maybe I'll just swing over to a Goodwill. I, I think that's amazing. I think that's really the reason I asked that question, like how you fit stuff in is because, we all know having kids is tough. We all know having a full-time job is tough. And then we all know eBay sometimes finding time to thrift, clean, list is tough. So I'm always interested to kind of figure out like how dads and moms do it because, you know, Kate is a year and, year and five months or a year and four months. Okay. Um, and so he's not like, he's not like three or four years old, you know, where he's like completely running around yet. So yeah, just wait. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I just noticed we have the similar background to you guys. You guys see thrifters and eBayers over here? <laughs> yeah, it goes on and on and on over there. Wow. Do you use the same labels as 10K on the Bay? Do you print yeah. the same font? Yeah. Yep. Oh, man. Yeah. That's, that's funny. Uh, oh, it's funny you mentioned that because when I started, um, yeah, I stored my inventory in a kid's pack and play. <laughs> <laughs> really completely unorganized um hmm. I just had it in piles you know i thought i was being uh all neat and organized until one night when someone purchased something and i freaked out and couldn't find it of course it was in there but it took me like you know 15 minutes to find it and i said absolutely right there i stopped after watching one of chris's videos on the inventory and i was like i need to get organized yeah like organization is key guys like oh. i don't know if you guys noticed i took a um um uh, Instagram post of kind of what I have and I'm not like the best like my words not gospel but there's nothing worse and Glenn you can you can attest to this there's nothing worse than like trying to sell an item and you can't find it and uh, and guys that metric is no joke if you can't sell that item um, yeah, yeah. you know to, to get out of good standings or or top rated so you gotta really watch out for that yeah it's always my biggest fear that I you know sold something twice um, uh, along those lines and then I'd lose top rated seller because I'd have to cancel a bunch of orders and whatnot But luckily I've been pretty organized. So I haven't had to do that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah So let's go on to the next question because these questions are amazing and I came up with them <laughs> So the <laughs> next question is and I think nobody really asked this and the reason I like to ask this is because like I Remember the time I I thought about eBay like I I, I remember the time that I basically was like you know oh crap i can sell on ebay like because when you when you talk about ebay people think like 
five, six years ago. They don't realize eBay is still going strong, right? Exactly. So how, how did you learn about reselling? Like, and what I mean by that is like, how did, when did you think about selling on a platform like eBay? So I've had an eBay account since like 2007. Sold maybe one thing here or there in the years, you know, that I had the account. Never really used it. I bought more stuff than I ever really sold. Um, if I just had, you know, a laptop or, you know, something nice, I'd just sell it on eBay. But that was even when you had to pay for listings and pay for pictures and, and stuff like that. Um, but I was chatting with a buddy who's an entrepreneur himself. And I was probably talking to him about needing more money and whatnot with kids everywhere and they want all the toys. So he was telling me to just get on eBay. He did it just recently. And he was like, just post some stuff. Just, just, just do it, you know? And I kept telling him like, you know, I don't have time. Um, I used all these excuses, you know, I, I just, where am I gonna find time to do all this? And so finally, I just looked around the house and I found this DVD set that was new. And it, it was like to teach you how to speak English. I think my wife got it free somewhere in the classroom. And um, I just posted it up with my phone right on my bar, I think. I just you know, and what do you know? Not 30 minutes later, it sold to someone in Puerto Rico. <laughs> wow. And I, I was just like, did that just happen? This is pretty amazing. Like, can I really, you know, so then I started scavenging the house for like all things that were just <laughs> touched in a year. And I just started posting a couple of things here and there and it was really working. So I was just like, wow, eBay is for real. You can actually sell stuff mm -hmm. and at this point i did not know about the community um i didn't know any, anyone's youtube channels or i didn't even know what instagram i mean i knew what it was but i never used it uh i'm not hip like those younger kids i guess uh, <laughs> but all those snapchats and stuff no, oh. um so I, I think in the end though i looked up a video on how to ship something because on that dvd i think i shipped it for like 11 dollars. i didn't know what i was doing <laughs> something that could go first class. I think I shipped it priority. Um, so I had to learn how to ship efficiently. And I think Lindy Glenn, I learned that from, but uh, yeah, I that really got me into the eBay stuff. That it's funny. You said that because I remember my first eBay sell. Um, so I sold, I went to the Goodwill bins and um, those of you who've been to Goodwill bins, you know, like the big ones, uh, you go in there and you're intimidated. Like I remember walking into Goodwill bins, didn't buy anything and walked right out within like, two minutes. I was like, I cannot do this. Like what is going on? It was, it was intimidating. And then I went back a second time and then it got a little easier. Well, I purchased this game. Um, and I can't even remember what game it is. And I remember I sold, that was the first time I sold and it was, um, it was going to be sent to Hawaii or something like that. Anyways, I sold this game. I was all freaked out. Cause I think it was just amazing. Right. I'm, I'm starting, I'm starting eBay. Like I sold this item. Well, I go to ship the item and I screwed up the shipping and it cost the game cost me a dollar. Um, I received like six fifty from it. So that's what I sold it for. And I paid $16 in shipping. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. oh my gosh, I, yes. yeah, I paid the $16. I sent the item, yep. but I, oh my gosh, yep. it was, and the then I was, would pay it even if I lost it. Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, I got one more story, Glenn, and then we'll get back on track. But my third item, I bought this like a nativity scene, right? And it was a big box. And I had um, I had priority mail on it. Yeah, I had priority mail on it. And I remember it was in the back of the back in the vehicle, and my mom was sitting in the passenger seat, guys. She was sitting there. And so I tapped her on the shoulder and I said, Hey, do you want to come in and I'll teach you how to ship this? And the reason I said that was because she was going to do a lot of my shipping. And, and by the way, I just sold this item. And I haven't sold much on eBay. So I tapped her on the shoulder. And I was like, hey, let me let me come in come in here and I'll show you how to ship this thing, right? And uh, it I, I got 60 bucks for this thing, shipping it to New York from, from Oregon, by the way. And they wanted $320 to ship this item. My Lord. $320. My mom starts cracking up laughing <laughs> because she and I have like... I, I was like, hey, can I ship this thing? I didn't know how much. I, I was like new, right? And so the the lady told me how much, and I the life drained out of my body. 
I look like a uh, zombie up there trying to ship this item. And mom cracks up in the corner because I'm the one telling her how to ship items. And then I go there and it, <laughs> oh my gosh, dude, it was That's crazy. It was, and the fact that I'm still here selling stuff, I mean, you guys should be watching somebody else, right? No, it was, uh, it was an experience. It was crazy. But uh, anyways, um, let's go on to the next question because I think that was a good question. So, and, and by the way, guys, like me and Glenn did not have not had time to rehearse this because, um, you know, I was off on that on Chris's channel. So this is really raw footage is what you're seeing. All right. So another thing is how long have you been reselling? I think that you said 2006. Well, yeah, I had my account since uh, 2007, but not really selling hardcore. Um, so I started February of 2017. Nice. And that the first couple months was me not even really knowing what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, give or take a couple months in there. But yeah, I started right in February. That's awesome. Yeah, I, um, I'm, I'm curious. And I this isn't actually on our list. I'm, I'm throwing stuff at you. But um, I want... And the reason I bring this up is I kind of want to know on these interviews, like who you started watching. You said you started watching Lindy Glenn. What other resellers out there do you enjoy watching? I really like uh, watching Luke and Lasan Entrepreneurs, Chris Tankay. Um, I watch probably everything of him and I chat with him now and then. I uh, love his content and he's just been a big uh, inspiration on leveling up. Um, I got to have Glenn Hustler Hacks and Ken Hustleby. Those guys are amazing. Uh, Rally Roots and, of course, Wade's Ventures. Oh, dude, you are amazing for plugging that in. I appreciate <laughs> it. <laughs> I, you know, it's really, it's really humbling because when I first started reselling, I remember like discovering like Chris, right? And and then I was and then I was like, okay, maybe this is the thing, right? People are reselling online. And then you discover somebody else and then you discover somebody else. Like it's never, there's no content out there to discover like a massive amount of amazing people at once. I know. And so, so nice in the community. And you know, I, uh, I got some followers, just a couple and everyone's so friendly and always helpful with questions and it's really great. It, it is amazing. Like it is, it is really cool. And that's why I asked like what fall, what resellers you like, because uh, people that watch this, maybe not live, but watch this can go and add them because, yes. you know, and, and Ryan and Allie, I've talked to Ryan on the phone. Amazing guy. Just the same way. Just he's the same on the phone as he is online. Yep. Um, so they look, really, yeah, they, they are so genuine and they are just so much fun to watch. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to do the fist pump? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So the next question is this, guys uh, and Glenn. What are you passionate about selling? The reason I asked this question is when you're first starting out selling on eBay, you kind of want to stick with something you're passionate about so you don't lose interest more importantly, but you also know a little bit about the product. So what are you passionate about selling? Because you have an amazing Instagram. I do stalk you on Instagram and I see a lot of your cool stuff, but they may not. So, Yeah, um, I think it's really important to have some passion about what you're selling. I've tried selling in different categories and I was totally bored with it or I just didn't like it. Uh, my main uh, selling category is men's clothes. Um, I've tried women's clothes and I don't like it at all. Um, if something's given to me for free, of course, I'll probably sell it. But um, I tried it. It's too confusing, in my opinion, <laughs> being a guy. Uh, there's so many different tops and styles and I'll pick up St. John pants all day. but. Uh, um, the women's clothes I stay away from. Uh, I'll look at jackets and whatnot. But uh, and then Luke, you know, he he's selling all those blazers. I gave it a try, but I told him when I met him, I was like, I don't like them. They're all yours. Yeah, he Luke is so amazing because he's an analytic guy. Like you can tell, he thinks about numbers. And I think owning your eBay business is all about numbers. So, yeah. um, it's really cool. And. Real quick, Glenn, this is hilarious, buddy. So two days ago or a day ago, I was in Ross Just for Less, right? And I, I was live on Instagram. I swoop over to the men's. I'm going to the men's. I swoop to the shoes. I'm going to the men's shoes. And then I go to the women's area, which, as you know, I've been trying out, right? Yeah. And uh, I have my phone. I don't have any anything here. So I just have my phone. And I was talking to people on Instagram. But... I was swapping through women's clothing and I noticed people, women in particular would walk by me and smile or look at me funny. 
because not only was I talking to something random, right? They don't know if I'm talking to myself, but I'm swiping through women's clothes. It was That's amazing. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. yeah I like, I like uh, the Ross game, um, watching Glenn and chatting with him too sometimes. Uh, um, I'm really trying to get into it. I think there's a lot of competition in sneakers. If I look at, you know, local apps, the sneaker game is so flooded in our city. So I'm wondering if they're, it's, if it's so competitive. Um, but I'm taking a really big interest in that lately because uh, I love selling new, new with tag stuff. Yeah. It, it's super easy to sell new with tag stuff. I think the margins are a little bit less. Yeah, they um, are. But, um, and, you know, I, it's, it's easy to list too. Like it just overall, the experience is good. Yep. Um, so real quick, what, for the viewers out there, what platforms are you selling on? Are you only on eBay or are you trying other stuff out? So um, I'll sell occasionally on OfferUp. Uh, that's my preferred one. It seems like in our city, OfferUp um, definitely gets more action than the others, like Letgo and Craigslist even. Um, so I try to stay on there. I try to source from there as well. Um, eBay is my main go-to one. And then I'm into Poshmark now and uh, merch. Nice. Wow, you're into a lot. And by the way, Tommy, I appreciate the shout out, buddy. Um, it definitely, when you surround yourself with amazing people, you tend to you tend to go quicker. Um, I appreciate the shout out. And we have some amazing people in chat. I'll spend a two, couple seconds. Cindy is always in my chat, flipping daily. Appreciate it. You're always in there. Just you're in there. And I'm missing a ton of people. Um, I don't know if you can see chat, Glenn, but there's a lot of love for you being here too. Yeah, I can see it now. Cool. All right. So, um, the, now you said you're, are you on, are you trying merch? You said, yeah, merch by Amazon. Uh, again, watching Glenn got me inspired to do that. Um, the first step is, you know, just sign up because <laughs> it took me months of waiting. I think it took me three plus months to get approved. Um, and then I spent that time though prepping and preparing for it. So when I did get approved, I wasn't just now what? Um, yep. I, I use Adobe Illustrator to do my own designs. I haven't outsourced anything, but I'd love to do it. I, I might even hire Glenn to do some. I think the hardest part with Amazon Merch is just coming up with ideas. In, in my opinion, the design part is not too tricky, but yeah, coming up with ideas is a little tricky. Um, but that's going pretty well. I'm not selling a crazy amount of shirts on there but it's fun and it's a nice little you know check when it deposits every month yeah and i'm no expert guys but i can tell you i give you a couple tips for amazon merch tip number one is to sign up like if you go to my instagram my link tree um i don't get anything if you sign up for merch but i have it in there just for people to sign up sign up it takes five seconds um you do have to wait uh, a little bit and um so sign up for merch now once you sign up even if you're not approved yet, you can, it will show you the design and you can start creating templates. So you can start creating before you're approved. I know that sounds weird, but it will save you a little time. Once you're approved, you can just start uploading. Yeah. Uh, and another tip too, that I'm going to use is I am, I, you guys, like I got kicked out of kindergarten because I couldn't draw within the lines. Like I am a horrible designer. Glenn, I'm admitting that on the channel here. And um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to reach out to local colleges and have college kids design shirts for me and pay them, you know, a little bit of money for their design and they can use it for their portfolio too. Yeah, it's so, cool. yeah, it's a cool idea and it doesn't cost much. You get people are way talented than, than I am. What's going on, Philip? Welcome to the channel. Hustling, welcome to the channel. Um, Tommy, welcome to the channel too, buddy. So that being said, um, merch is really, really cool. Yep. Now, what is, I think this is a really good question to ask you. What is your 2018 goals for selling in general, but primarily on eBay, but in general, and this could be selling or it could be just like mental stuff. Like what's your 2018 goals? So yeah, I want to get consistent because last year you know, I mentioned I started off slow because I didn't really know what I was doing, but I've been slowly progressing my processes and, and everything. And I got a good streamlined process now where I can kind of go full steam ahead. Um, I probably want to gross around 50,000. Um, so that's a goal that I'm trying to attack. And I think it's very doable. Um, 
and I want to continue listing on a consistent basis on multiple platforms like Posh and eBay because it's so important to stay active. Yep, it's important to be on multiple platforms. Um, guys, did you hear that? 50,000 is the goal and he has a full-time job with two kiddos running around the house. And I don't know if you guys ever tried to feed two kids, but I'm trying to feed yeah. one and it's tough. Yeah, yeah. Uh, w w luckily, we do uh, grocery shopping online now and then we just go and pick it up at the store because uh, let me tell you, grocery shopping with two little kids is a nightmare. <laughs> that is an amazing tip. That's yeah, an amazing it's, tip. Yeah, it's worth like the two or three dollars they charge you to, to do the pickup. I mean, uh, everyone else will thank me too when I'm not bringing my kids in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh man How, okay this isn't this isn't i guys i'm gonna say this again the point of this show monday tuesday wednesday is to invite people on the channel who have no experience who are not insta or youtube famous i want to invite the gems think of me as the ellen of reselling that's what i want to do glenn um my question to you buddy is this how does your wife feel about your reselling like what does her role play into it and does she help you at all like tell me a little bit about your wife's standpoint she has a full-time job as well uh she's a teacher and she's looking at me like i'm, like yeah. I'm the crazy one because i work more than you but i get paid. <laughs> oh, bring I the get wife paid, on Glenn. Like, bring the wife on. What you make. <laughs> uh she does not help me with with uh reselling at all uh well i guess she does by watching the kids when i do it. <laughs> <That's so good. laughs> oh man uh, i wish i could do more yeah maybe eventually i i i think she could definitely you know be a good asset on some things yeah can, can we get uh can we get guys in chat right now let's ask let's ask some more wife husband questions because this is going to be hilarious Boys. <laughs> I'm, I'm joking. I'm putting Glenn on the spot. Oh, yeah. Or when I'm when I was trying to sell women's clothes too, she would I would be ho holding stuff up like, "What is this? What is this?" And yeah, and toys as well. She, uh, she's good at shopping for toys for me to sell. That that's actually funny that you said that because Ashley, when I was starting women's clothing, I was other if it wasn't Nike, Under Armour, Adidas, I was like, "What is this? Like, have you heard of this brand?" Like. I think yep. she supports a lot in that way too, kind of like yep. your wife. Yep. So, but I, guys, I, I'm getting some uh, some questions in chat saying I don't look like anything like Ellen. But uh, <laughs> Glenn, come on now. This this is the closest you're going to get to Ellen unless you go to her show, which is really hard to get into. But uh, no, I I want to say, guys, like it is so super humbling to get people like, especially people who have followed you, like. Glenn has been part of my, like every single time he's liking my videos, he's commenting, he's on Instagram. Like, and I didn't even know this. I thought Glenn personally was full time. Um, the way that he is, he's active on social media and yet he has a full time job. And I only thought you had one kiddo. And now you have two. Yeah. I found out. Yeah, man, you are, I, I work pretty hard and, um, I think it's paying off. It is definitely paying off. And and my well, another question too, and I, I asked this too, like, are you the cool thing about reselling is like for me, is like I can teach I'm gonna teach Cade the value of like making money, the value of a dollar, you know, like the value of flipping something or like being cautious of what you buy. And I think um you correct me if I'm wrong, but is that something you're kinda like doing when you're parent too? Yeah, yeah. Um my oldest son shows an interest already in what I'm doing and He's always helping me uh, carrying all the packages and every morning he gets out of bed, he wants to carry packages down. And, and then also when my little son, uh, he'll ask, uh, well, what am I doing? And uh, my oldest son will be like, oh, he's, you know, working with the stinky clothes, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny, but yeah, it, um, it's good to show him, you know, the value of hard work too. Mm -hmm. Guys, these, these are important questions we're asking because it's not only eBay, but it's life questions and life and eBay integrate, you know, some and on somewhat of a level. So, all right, Glenn. So let's go on to the next one, buddy. And this one is going to be interesting. I'm glad your wife's in the background because I really want to hear her take on this too. But how has reselling changed your life? And like, how does making money from reselling and the whole process and also meeting people online and on social media, how does that change your life? It's pretty amazing, um, especially when you're, you know, a good-sized family of four and 
like you said, you got different expenses for family and, and whatnot. And usually a lot of money just goes to bills. So this reselling has really helped us um, pay down some debt, um, afford, you know, maybe an extra toy here or there That's for the kids. Um, I'll be driving down to see my family in Florida so that, you know, this allows us to, you know, take a little mini trip uh, away from home. Um, and then everyone in the community, uh, they're just all amazing people. Um, I, I just love getting along with everyone and trying to help where I can. And I receive, like you say, a lot of the times I receive so much more than I give. So I just try to try to help where I can. That's awesome. I think the, the end goal here is we live once and you know, the here in the U S it's, expensive to live. I mean, yeah, there's areas that are cheaper, but you still have to make money to be able to do something and provide to your family and take your kids to Legoland and get big lollipops and build a bear and all that yeah. stuff costs money, right? Sure. So, <clears throat> all right, let's go on to the next tier. And I'm going to, we've already kind of dove into this, but um, my, my, we kind of already went into this question, but it's on here. So, what do you get most out of social media, the community? Like what, what kind of stuff do you get from social media to help with your reselling? The knowledge is everything. Um, uh, Chris has helped me level up unbelievably amounts. Um, just chatting with him on the side too. And what do you think of this? And uh, he's always willing to help. Uh, always really quick to answer too. So just being able to, you know, reach out to people, Luke and Glenn. Um, they're always, everyone's just so, so nice and willing to help. Um, I've learned almost everything I do on YouTube too, or just doing it. Um, I got a hack from you over here with my lazy Susan. <laughs> Didn't even know what that was until you, you had yours going. And I was like, I need to do that. Do you, uh, uh do, is your lazy Susan ac accessible? Can you show people? It is. It's, uh, it's kind of. Where is it? It's oh yes, the over there. It's a little hard to see, but my all my lights are in the way. Do you have? I, uh, you have <clears throat> I use yep. four lights on a mannequin with a lazy Susan. Um, yeah, I saw that from you. So. Otherwise, I've, I've seen people where they're lifting up the mannequin and turning it or just twisting the mannequin. I'm like, there's, there's a better way and Wade's doing it. <laughs> you have to be efficient. I think like the, there's two things with reselling that like I really want to excel at. One of them is efficiency. Like yeah. if you guys notice like Lazy Susan, so you can turn your mannequin so you don't have to worry about like manually doing it. That saves you time. Um, having four lights will save you time so you don't have to edit your videos in, in yep. either. Um, like getting those, um, it's in my link tree, but you guys can get those like cool organizers and la label it. So it has like all your stuff in one tray that you can move around. Um, Nicole State does that too. So there's like so many different things that you can do to make your yourself efficient to like list way more. And that's really cool. You got that lazy Susan. Yeah, I, I love it. it um, like you said, it's so more efficient and I use actually two, two stations too. Here's the flat lay station with some jeans ready to prep. And then I use the mannequin for all the clothes and that's super easy. I'll do batch, batch jobs. I'll do, you know, 20 pairs of jeans and 20 shirts or whatnot. Where are you getting those shelving units behind you too? Those are nice. Those are from Lowe's. Um, I really like them a lot. And then the bins are from target. I hate these blue bins. They were just old ones that I had. I buy all the clear ones now. Um, so yeah, just Lowe's. Um, I use my PayPal debit card to you know get a one percent back. Yeah, you guys, that PayPal debit card is amazing. You guys definitely should get it. it doesn't cost yeah. anything. Um, and yeah, when I was first starting, I was just using random cards, whatnot, and, and then I was like, oh, you, you need to get the PayPal debit card. Yeah. So once you sign up with PayPal and all you guys are that are selling on eBay, pretty much. Um, get the PayPal debit card and only buy stuff with that. So yep, that yep. way at the end of the year for taxes, it's super easy. Plus it gives you an idea because I think what happens when you use multiple cards is you don't truly know what you're paying for inventory. Now, if you use one card, you can clearly see what you bought. But I think if you use a ton of different cards, you are not clearly knowing what you're spending. 
And then important uh, important tip too, guys. That I use GoDaddy um, bookkeeping because it auto syncs every single day multiple diff multiple things, but it auto syncs my PayPal, my PayPal fees, my shipping fees. It can sync your bank accounts. It can sync credit cards that you have with the business every single day. It syncs that into one one cool little. Uh, in fact, I'll show you. Um, yeah, I use QuickBooks. Do you? Um, let's see. Oh, I don't even have it. Um, anyway, GoDaddy is pretty cool. So yep. if you guys have questions for Glenn, put it in the put it in the um, chat as well, guys. It'd be amazing. So that being said, Glenn, let's go ahead and go to our next question here, which is, please tell us. I mean, first of all, with that light in front of you, you've got amazing complexion. But other than that. Tell us like a hack or a tip or something regarding reselling. It could be anything from eBay to what, what you think the people need to know. Um, any kind of ha tips or hacks? Yeah. These lights are really hot by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in, I'm in our bonus room. That's where I do all the work. And when I have actually, I got actually five lights. I, when I have all five on this room heats up like a sauna. Um, I got a tip that I shared on Instagram. Um, I'm doing a lot of cross posting on Poshmark and, and I'm running into this fairly commonly. Um, I send out some offers on Poshmark and the item sells for full price on eBay. Well, now I'm hoping that that item doesn't sell on Poshmark, right? Because otherwise I'd have to cancel one or the other. Um, and Poshmark doesn't make it they make it so you can't delete or mark not for sale if you have pending offers. Um, so you're almost stuck in limbo. Well, what I originally did, I found out you could just change the price. They allow you to change the price even with pending offers. And once you change that price, it voids the pending offers and you can mark it not for sale. I tried that. Then they just rolled out the new feature of send an offer to all your people. And when I had to do this last night, it wasn't working. So then I was kind of freaking out. And then I found you can change the size as well. And that allows you to mark it not for sale. So you can either try the price or the size and that will void any pending offers you have on Poshmark and then you can mark it not for sale. So then you don't get double sales. Cause I post a lot of, I try to keep popular trends on Poshmark, not junk. Um, so things on eBay and Poshmark, they're kind of competing for each other because they're both kind of popular. I recently sold a pair of Burberry swim trunks and I had like four or five offers on Poshmark and multiple offers on eBay. And then it finally sold on eBay full price. Um, so that's another thing I found Poshmark. You got to almost just list trendy stuff. I think Chris has said it a lot too. You, you really can't sell junk. It just won't sell on there. I think, uh, I think that's key because I was telling Chris too on our on our um, video. Those of you who don't know who are in the chat, um, I just did a live video on Chris 10K on the Bay's YouTube channel, um, so you guys can watch that. It is um, pretty hilarious. But um, and and by the way, guys, I don't typically ask this, but I would love you to death if you hit the thumbs up below the video because I want more people um, to be able to experience Glenn. He's an amazing guy, and that's how they'll do it. If you hit the like below. But um, that is an amazing device, advice, Glenn, because I'm actually looking to move a lot of my stuff over to Poshmark and cross post. So I'm trying to make it a habit when I post on eBay to post on Poshmark at the same yep. time. So yeah, I've, I've tried that as well. It only takes an additional couple minutes. Um, here's a tip on some things that I found sell well on Poshmark and it's women's skinny jeans. Um, if you have any skinny jeans, list those. Those sell really well. Um, I know Chris said that he wasn't having much luck with jeans, but uh, the skinny ones really sell well. Men's dress shirts probably because the market's not flooded with them. Uh, lots of surprisingly, a lot of Brooks Brothers stuff sells on Poshmark pretty well. Um, so th those are like the two things that I try to do: men's dress shirts and women's skinny jeans over there, and then of course higher end brand stuff. I got a I got a question for for Mrs. Gwen. Did you ever? think that your husband would be selling skinny jeans online <laughs> no no it this this whole thing is very bizarre because he has no fashion sense whatsoever <laughs> oh i think you have a really amazing shirt on glenn 
This is uh, this shirt is not thrifted, but the jeans I am wearing are. Yeah, now, now you're getting better. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, another okay. thing. My passion about selling men's clothes is because I get to keep the ones that I like. I like that. I like that. Any uh, seven for all mankind jeans in my size, I tend to keep. One, one more question for the missus: Has, has e ha, has your husband selling on eBay, Poshmark, and all these platforms helped him like level up in the in terms of like what he wears out and about? Because I know I used to wear crappy clothes and I started selling online, and now I'm looking fly, right? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he he is looking better. He does have a, a good wardrobe, but he's always been one where his parents, you know, made sure he was in his Abercrombie wear when he was younger, and he's always had better clothes than I have. So that's amazing. I actually sold a shirt the other night that I wore out. I had it listed, and it was a nice untuck it shirt. Um, those those are nice shirt. shirts, and I wore it out, and then. Uh, of course, it was nice and clean when I went to sell it, but uh, it, it sold for. It was like a fifty dollars shirt. Yeah, I that one real bad, but uh, I I couldn't turn down a fifty dollars sale. I I think that's amazing, Glenn, because like literally, um, oh. it's funny. Like you can wear, you can wear clothes, and then you can sell them. You know, like it, you can wear a really expensive shirt and then turn around and sell it the next day. And I think that's really really cool. The, the yeah, fact I thrifted, that you can... I, I like to thrift a lot of jeans, wear them for a couple months, and then sell them at the exact same price, you know, that I would have originally. And I got some use out of it. Oh yeah. All right. So let's do this, Glenn. As you guys know, um, I asked a bunch of these questions and really want to dig into Glenn's life because he is an amazing reseller. He's been here for a while, but the reason I, I, I do this part is to kind of keep you guys on your toes. And I want to show, I want Glenn to show us some amazing finds, so Glenn, go ahead and show them where, what kind of finds you got and kind of where you got them. This one I was uh, thinking of keeping for myself, but I'm going to definitely sell it. Uh, I don't know if you ever watch Paul Cantu. I haven't. Uh, on YouTube? Yeah. That guy is uh, hilarious and you, you got to check him out. Um, he sells a lot of vintage stuff. So I, I use him to pick up some vintage uh um, styling clothes. And so this first piece right here is oh. a vintage Nautica competition sweatshirt, fully embroidered. Um, this is, this is real clean. No, no holes or stains or anything. Um, that's rare. Yeah. Th this should easily fetch 40 plus. Um, and it's, it's really nice and it was my size. So I almost, I, I actually did keep it through the winter, but I'm going to sell it now. I think I would actually keep that. Uh, uh, it's so nice, like, and it's so soft, um, and it's just, it's just so fly too. Yeah. Oh, and I, I was looking. I was like looking really close to see if I can see anything, but that thing looks clean. Yeah, I mean, it, it's really nice. Um, I think even when I got it, I was like, yeah, I'm keeping this. Let's see. Another thing, I like to sell Tommy Bahama shirts. You might have seen this on my Instagram. Um, this is a Tommy Bahama Hula Girl shirt. Oh my gosh, that thing is amazing. Yeah. And uh, these do really well for me. Uh, you know, the ones with the fancy things on there, you could get 30 plus. Um, the embroidered ones and floral ones, you could get even more um sometimes even the solid colors sell for a solid 20 25 shipped um but when this one jumped out i was like i was like hey jeanette you I think <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna get this one i yep. would i would sport that the funny thing is is like i remember going to the bins you know going to the thrift stores when i was starting out and i'd see like really wonky shirts and i'd be like i'm not picking that up but you got to remember it's not like what you like um and it's those crazy color, colorway, like weird stuff that sells quick because there's just not much of it on there, you know? Yeah. To really be successful and to level up, I think you have to stay on what what's really on trend, what people are buying, studying all the solds and, and the trends in the news and what and whatnot, because um, things that I sell you I would never believe sell sometimes and they sell for a lot of money. 
Yep. And being on social media, like there's been two big sales, one Ross sell and one Nordstrom rack sell that had no idea what was going on unless I'd be on Instagram. I was too post. late to the Nordstrom rack sale. I know I, that I last one I was late to, I was like, I, I saw uh, Nicole and uh, I saw what she was pulling in or trying to get and, and Emma and I was, I was jealous. Yeah. It's um, uh, that's one thing. That's the reason I was like, you know, I'm like inviting everybody I possibly can now on Instagram. Cause I'm like, you know, I want to see if there's any sales locally in yeah. my area. Yep. Yeah. I follow a lot of local resellers. Um, you know, just getting an idea of what's, what's, what's out there and whatnot. Wow. Paul, you said he had over half a million subscribers. Holy cow, man. I'm out of the game. I got to get him added. Oh yeah. Paul can too. Um, yeah, he's hilarious. And he calls himself the thrift God. Um, yeah, wow. I highly recommend his content for a good laugh and, and whatnot. Huh? See, that's exactly why I have. It's crazy. I say this every show. So you get a lot of times you get one YouTuber invites another YouTuber that's well known and they do collaborations, which is completely fine. That's what I did with 10 K on the base channel. And that's what I'm going to do on my channel too. But Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays, is dedicated to people that are not Insta or YouTube famous because I want to uncover all this other stuff that people can do, but I haven't heard yet. And Glenn, that's interesting that you're on here and, and said that because I had no idea. Yeah. Now, it is possible to find designer brands in the thrift. Um, you won't believe how many times I find Burberry. I found a Burberry trench coat um just sold those burberry um swim trunk for 150 dollars holy cow and 350 for them at a goodwill i mean it you can find i i find the novacek polos all the time so everyone out there uh you know don't get discouraged you will find the good stuff here and there and this is evidence of that this is a uh new tags prada women's raincoat wow um, new with tags it retails for twelve hundred dollars um and so this i paid up twenty dollars um but i think it's definitely worth it you paid up that is <laughs> unique design um so yeah I, I really don't know what it's valued at because i couldn't really find too many comps so i i just started super high and i've been working my way down a little bit but i think i'll get about four hundred dollars for it maybe that's what i recommend start high do yep. your title do your description yep. and if you don't get any bites then you can um you can then adjust if your title is exactly. perfect exactly uh, so that was really exciting to find and i even asked the lady in the store i was like what is this like and she's like, I think it's a raincoat. <laughs> You're making Christina jealous. <laughs> if you want to buy it, it's on eBay. <laughs> um, a big passion of mine as well is selling jeans, um, men's and women's. I have no preference. Uh, I find more women's jeans than men's. But when I find these in men's, um, they sell for amazing money. Um, the true religion jeans. Uh, in the men's, they sell for easily forty to fifty dollars shipped. Um, women's go for a little lower, but if you hold out, you'll get the you'll get about forty dollars. I'm um, curious, um, real quick, you guys that are not following Christina, she's in the chat with the little wrench. Um, she's got an amazing channel and an amazing Instagram, so you guys should definitely go follow her. But uh, Glenn, quick question, buddy, how are you photo like how are you taking pictures of your jeans? I'm really curious. Like, are you doing like the W effect or how are you doing it? It's funny. I've kind of evolved. I started with the W effect. Didn't like it. Um, now I do the check, the check mark as my main photo, but I do eight photos typically. And I get all, I do the full length shot. Um, so yeah, I do all the angles, but my main photo is the check. I, I think it's amazing like when you do a lot of photos because it helps with two things, buyer confidence, and then I think you get less returns because people have the option to really... Now, they they say that people don't really go past like photo five and six, but I feel like I get less returns when I do full like 10 to 12 photos than if I did you know one to two to three. I've definitely had buyers um, 
I could tell they didn't even look at a single photo beyond the first one because of their messages to me afterwards or whatnot. Um, but yeah, the, the more photos, the better. If you find a flawed document, it, don't try to hide it or sneak it over on the buyer. Um, it'll bite you. So I always photo any flaw that I might've missed and just disclose it. And typically it'll sell. So, yep. I, um, for me, it's like you're marketing to millions of buyers, right? So, you know, those, I don't try to hide anything in the sense because, and none of the, I'm sure none of you guys do, but the way that it works basically is, is if there's a flaw, take a picture of it because yeah. the time it takes you to like clean an item, unless it's, you know, I mean, I'm saying clean your items, but sometimes don't spend so much time on one item because at the end of the day, you're marketing to so many people, it's going to sell. It just, it's going to sell. It just may take time, but yeah. I would just put it, and I always put my photos that have issues by the tag. Cause I feel like people are going to want to look at the tag yep. and I always try to put it there. I, I usually do it right before the tag photo. So then the, I know they'll see it cause they want to see the tag photo. Like you said. Yep. Um, Christina said flawed items sell quicker for me because people think they are getting a better deal since they're saving a little bit because of the flaw. And I could not agree more, especially like new with tag items. You do get a lot of flaws sometimes even from Ross. So mm -hmm. yeah, your Ross game is, inspirational to watch man uh <laughs> I, I i've gone to my ross and I, I go consistently now um but i don't really have too much luck there i don't know if it's just our area or if uh other people are beating me to the game uh and it's not the shoes the shoes aren't really the problem i've, I've had some success in getting some of those it's the clothes really um yeah no yeah. women's clothes though are over flooding in rosses here yep um, the, the key with the Ross game, especially with like the men's clothing is so for example, I think I had a question and I, I apologize guys. Like I'm still doing this live stuff too. So I'm trying to like get in good with the, the questions on chat. That's why I keep looking over here. But, um, somebody asked what this week's Ross is for their discounts. Cause the way that it works typically is every, um, Sunday night, the managers of the Ross will get a sheet from corporate showing what they need to mark down. And um, this week it was hard goods. So it was like the hard goods section. So I don't believe any of the women's or men's got marked down this week. Um, last week it was the men's. You guys, sh I showed you guys some stuff that I, I got from the men's area. Um, so the key with the Ross game is to be early and don't be afraid to ask. So if you have a Ross next to you, call the night before, which is a Sunday and speak with the manager because a lot of times they're the only ones that know. Don't speak with the regular employee, speak with the manager and ask them extremely polite, hey, what are you guys gonna be marking down tomorrow? Because I'd love to go in and buy it. And then a lot of times they'll give you the information first and then you be in there quick because a lot of times when you go in the morning, they're marking down stuff as you walk in when they open because they open earlier. And that way you can kind of follow them around, around be a lurker and grab the stuff off the shelf and you can be the first one to beat all the other resellers. That's a good tip. Do you usually go before work or when do you find time to go? I've got a secret weapon. I've got a secret weapon, Glenn. I can't give all my... Is that I, your weapon? <laughs> no, but um, guys, as you know, I'm a complete open book. I want everybody to crush it. In fact, I welcome competition because I feel like it makes me better. But my secret weapon is mom. <laughs> mom, she is amazing. She is amazing. Awesome. Yes. Um, she goes to the stores for me in the mornings and, uh, cause I can't make it cause I have a full-time corporate job and she will like today she went into the stores and found out that it was hard goods. And then I went on Instagram and let everybody know it's hard goods. I don't know why I just made the phone thing, but, um, anyways, so that's, that's, that's my secret weapon. Um, but sometimes I have Mondays off and I'll go, but very rarely. That's cool. Yeah. And, and I, I guess Glenn, that brings us to our second thing is like, rely on other people like know what you can't do or what you're not good at and try to find a way to overcome it and to get help on that so well guys let's do this um glenn do you have a few more items to show us by the way i have one here it's just a little hard good um i love hard goods i i found this it's just a little uh egg coddler uh when i Picked them up. I didn't actually know what they were, but I looked up comps and they're they're made in England. Um, and I should be able to get twenty five bucks for the pair. Um, 
and I paid 50 cents. Hmm. So um, I also sold a, a cassette player. I think people saw my Instagram, uh, got that for free, sold for $25. Um, so really things that you think are junk, I probably would have just thrown that out and, uh, the comps weren't even really there, but I just kind of listed it. And it, it, if you list it, you, you at least have a chance to sell it. Um, yep. Um, I, so I, I started off doing, cause all you guys know, I, I got my start from selling on eBay through storage units. That's how I got my start. And so I was primarily doing hard goods and, um, and so, and then I kind of went to clothing because you can see in the back here um, that you can fit a lot more in the bins doing clothing and I had limited space. So I started doing more clothing, but now I'm starting to get it back into hard goods and it's really fun because your hard goods, you have way less competition in most areas. Yeah. Um, and the market's not flooded in, in most areas and um, stuff sells for a lot. The only thing with hard goods is you need to know what your shipping costs are. I think that's tough. Um, for, for anybody new or even some sweet people are not new. Um, and then also if you have space, um, I know I saw, um, Christina's latest YouTube video, she's in chat and, um, she's got, um, a YouTube channel and she showed her new space and she's got a whole office now. So maybe she has more room for hard goods. Um, but you know, I, now that I pulled the trailer out, I'm going to get back into the hard good game. And I think that's amazing. I love, uh, I love following people that sell a lot of hard goods. Yeah, the hard goods is so um, interesting to me. I, I follow some other people that are having a lot of success with it. And so every time I'm in the store, I'll take a peek. And the other month I picked up, I didn't even know what it was. It, it just looked kind of cool. It was like an Easter ceramic Easter item. It was like this big. And I looked up comps by the brand and they look strong. So I just paid 50 cents, I think. And I got home and I found out it was just a little planter you know, real little Easter bunny planter. Well, I sold it for $35, I think, something like that. I can't remember the exact amount, but it was insane. Like, so I'm just like, the margins are crazy if you can get it really cheap. Yep. So here's the thing. I'll give you guys some, some ideas, right? Um, and I, and, and Glenn, I know we're going off, going, uh, running out of time here. So I'll, I'll be quick to be respectful of your time, buddy. But the, the way that I work, um, the way that it works for me is so all these, all this clothing from, from <clears throat> Ross's Marshall's, all that, a lot of it is, um, items that are for winter, right? So my, my thinking is, is I'm going to buy all this stuff and then I will list it before fourth quarter, but it's going to be fourth quarter inventory for this winter coming up. Right. And same thing with the cleats. If you guys remember, I purchased like 600 pair in a week from all the Rosses in all the state of Oregon. I went to every single Ross except two in the state of Oregon and purchased all these cleats. Now, a lot of these people, when I purchased the cleats, were like, why are you purchasing these, you know, two, three, or $4 cleats? Um, they're not going to sell, right? But my thinking here is to buy them cheap and then sell them for next football season. Well, if you guys look at my YouTube, or excuse me, my, my eBay store, you'll notice that every day I'm selling two to three of those cleats. In fact, yesterday or today, I shipped out nine of those cleats that I paid less than two, three, four dollars for, and they were massive sizes, 13, 14, 15, and 16. So that's the way I operate. I like to buy the season before. So buy the season that's on clearance now for the next season. And that way I'm purchasing, I always have inventory at a really affordable rate. And that's why, you know, even though I have a massive death pile, it's new attack items that I'm I know I'm gonna be able to run through the system at a really good rate going forward at fourth quarter. So yeah, that's good. A good tip. You always have to try to stay ahead of the seasons. Uh, Cause you'll, that's how you'll get the discounted items too for, cause right now winter time, even wholesalers are trying to unload winter clothes now. And it's like, yes, please. I'll take that. Yep. Scott, to answer your question, PDX guys is Portland, Oregon. That's where I'm at. I'm actually in Beaverton, Oregon. And uh, yeah, it, it, it's been snowing. Um, it's supposed to snow tonight. So I love it when it snows now that I have kids. Glenn, I don't know. It probably gets snowy out there. You throw them out I, there. I get snow once or twice a year, and the kids love it. But uh, I'm from upstate New York, so I'm used to two feet of snow every day. Uh, but down here, I'm loving it. Uh, yeah, this winter was very, very mild. I think it was 80. Uh, yeah, I. so Cade was a little sick. I bundled him up like a marshmallow, and I threw him out there. 
um, <laughs> because he wanted to experience the snow, but he was super sick. And you have to be careful with kids now. They can get sick quick with this new flu that's running around. Uh, North Carolina, unfortunately, has had over 200 deaths from the flu. Holy uh, cow. Our state is second highest work, uh, second worst uh, with the flu right now. Um, I guess the heat is really messing with it. And it's it's really bad here. The hospitals are all over overloaded. It's crazy. You know that the worst part about this flu is they uh, mom keeps me updated. She's the weather person, right? And she said that basically what's happening is is once you get sick, you feel like it's over with, but then you get sick a second time, and that's what really gets you over because yeah. you think you're over it, you're not, and then you get sick a second time, even worse. So, yeah. and I think that goes to a, a point like Glenn, you look pretty fit, um, but you kind of want to stay healthy because you just never know, right? Like eat healthy. It's hard, but yeah, it's very hard. So, um, last question. I know this is off the topic here, but who cooks in the house, Glenn? Is it you or your wife mostly? I am very fortunate to have an amazing wife that cooks amazing food. Oh, she said. I grill. Uh, you, you can't cook. I can't cook. No. <laughs> you grill. She's an amazing it. cook. Uh, she uh, has four other siblings, I think. And uh, so she grew up, you know, cooking a lot. And uh, yeah, she's amazing. What, what's your favorite dish? I'm putting you on the spot. She makes uh, a mean lasagna. Uh-oh. You, you don't know what Wade's Ventures does with lasagna. I can <laughs> crock pot, bake. No, I, I I can respect a good lasagna. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, real quick, let's do a Q&A, and then we'll get, um, we'll get Glenn off and uh, re be respectful of his time. If you guys have questions for Glenn or myself, uh, for the next five minutes, we'll answer some questions. I want to say I really appreciate everybody that's joining my YouTube channel. It's starting to take off pretty quick. And I can tell you that I think a good portion of that success is being, I don't want to say a man of the people, but like inviting people on here. And and the funny thing is, is for example, um, uh, Farm Girl Scavenger was my first interview. She didn't, she had a YouTube channel, but she wasn't promoting it. Well, she was on my channel. Amazing lady lives near me never been live before on my channel. And then all of a sudden I get a little ding, ding, ding on my phone here. And, um, it was her saying that she did a new banner for her YouTube channel and she was doing steps in which to go live and just really cool. And that's the purpose of this guys. I want to invite people that have never been live before, get them on here, even though it's, it can be nerve wracking and very stressful. And then get them past that to where they want to start their own channels. And then maybe they get bigger than me and can give me a few shout outs. And that's the idea here. So, all right, let's see if we got any questions. Uh, so Paul says another benefit of full-time reselling, less exposure to other. Yep. Yep. That's true. And by the way, guys, anybody who has kids, they go to daycare, man, they're oh. like little manic magnets. Yeah. Daycare. Uh, yeah. Having two in there, when one of them gets sick, the other, it's a given. Yep. They both get sick. Yeah, it's um, – so we uh, – Kate got really sick from um, – um, somewhere from daycare. And, mm -hmm. man, and then I got sick. Ashley okay. got sick, and she's pregnant. So – and then oh, it, like yeah. – oh, my gosh. It was yep. it was bad. Yeah, no, my I'm son not... just got over an ear infection and a fever. Uh, so, yeah. Oh, my gosh. And especially kids with ear infections, that's horrible. Yeah. You know? Yeah, there's not much you can do. Yep. All right, Glenn. Or excuse me, uh, Glenn. Tell everybody where they can find you. Are you on YouTube? Are you on Instagram? Like, what platforms are you on so they can get you get you added? You can uh, find me on Instagram, Glenn Burn One. Uh, can you put that in chat for us? That is the main platform you can find me on. And that's just my name, and then one <laughs> are, you, are you planning on doing youtube or maybe a little not later? at the moment but i do have a channel but no, nothing's out there so you know maybe down the line so if glenn is an amazing guy guys subscribe to his youtube channel because you just never know and uh that's his instagram i can tell you that i've been following him for a while and be after the end of this video i will put a post with him and me in it and um you guys can tag him and add him but it's this community is amazing. I can't tell you this enough. I, and Glenn even said this, I get more than I receive. And I think it's the same way for Glenn. 
And um, it's just really cool to be able to invite people like Glenn on this channel who have supported me so long back when I had a few hundred followers on Instagram and now I'm over 10,000. So it's amazing. It's amazing to be able to like give back. And I think that's what we're doing here. And Glenn, you had a lot of cool points about Poshmark that I had no idea of, of changing the size or the price to basically cancel the order that sold on eBay. So really appreciate it. I appreciate you having me. Um, it's really enjoyable watching you and your content and your family uh, and your reselling knowledge. Uh, I really enjoy it and I really appreciate you having me on. Not a problem. And if you guys don't mind, hit the like button below. Please comment something random that Glenn can, uh, I can kind of put him on the spot and he can message you guys on comments and I'll message you guys in comments. And, um, and then more importantly, tomorrow, I have another interview, guys, with an amazing individual. And I'll let you guys know the time of that. You guys have an amazing time. I really appreciate you showing up here. Please subscribe, like, and I love you guys to the fullest. Glenn, any parting words? Just crush it. Yeah, go out and get some, as Glenn Hustler Hex would say. <laughs> Glenn, if you're watching this. All right, guys. I'll see you. Ready? See ya.